What is going on, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to another episode of The Kingdom Says. I am your host, as always, Garrett Williams. We've got the full crew today. My boy Kyle Henning on my left. Kyle, how are you doing today, sir? <sighs> Today's been a day. It's been it's been a day. It's been a day for some been quite Chiefs a day. Fans. It's been a day for all Chiefs fans. So we're gonna get to talk about all kinds of stuff that's taken place since the last time we talked to you guys. And there's been a combine and a whole bunch of other fun things so a lot of fun Can't stuff wait. cannot wait also join us on the bottom of the screen arrowhead tom tom how are we doing tonight sir oh boys looks like we're headed for another rebuilding year seems like it. Uh, the the early signs are saying that i think we don't do all right you know you know the yeah. alabama conversation what does that mean georgia again? conversation Anyone have a definition Listen, I, I, we're going to trigger this before we, we to, listen. We have a structure to the show. I'm doing great. We need uh, I am nervous as hell, but means. I just saw that we're we're heading for another rebuilding year. I would like to take a moment to congratulate the uh, uh, the Chargers on winning the AFC West in 2024. Nailed it. Yes, um, 48 yeah. hours Congratulations. after the Super Bowl was over. Congratulations to them. Hats they off. It. it was a great Honestly, season. It was a great performance. They really... Um, yes. Really, as expected, you know. Yeah. Finally, after exactly a decade expected. of actually. winning the off seasons, they are uh, yeah. finally it actually happened. Off top. Champion. It happened. Yeah, it's once done. again. Um, we actually, I, I got a, I got a T-shirt. Um, I'll start yeah. wearing it with the the Super Bowl I shirt. Say, yeah, but... like yeah, it should already be out, right? Or yeah, uh, oh yeah, they no. got the, there's, I'm <laughs> sure there's somebody with a tattoo already off. <laughs> yeah, I know we have a lot to talk about, but yeah, no, I. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. All uh, right. This All is right. my favorite time of the year, and, and it just got really interesting today. I was about to say, today, to today is the start of a very, very interesting offseason. Probably the most interesting offseason, at least the early signs are showing that, uh, in the Patrick Mahomes era, potentially. Um, so, do we do this every offseason? Maybe. I mean, everyone's the most interesting because it's it's happening at that moment, I feel like, right? All right. Last offseason wasn't that interesting. We got to do this Except real quick. it was. Because Tom decided to do this in the first 45 seconds of his intro. We do not rebuild <laughs> around here. I, we, I make fun of, and the partially dictionary. because Times Ours has lumped this in, and I give immense credit to Nate and them for coining the Tuscaloosa fan term. But at this point, guys, it's not just Tuscaloosa fan. It's Tuscaloosa program. They don't re, There's no rebuild. It's retool and have the same exact expectations you had last year. Now, yes. it's different in the NFL. It's a lot, hell of a lot harder to do in the NFL. But the mentality and the conversation, that's it now. Like, we talked about it last episode. There's And Patrick talked about it on stage at the Super Bowl. Rebuild? I don't know what that means. I'm do holding not, the Super Bowl during know. a rebuild year. So, again, it's it's not rebuild. It's retool and have the same exact goal you did last year, which is win the AFC West. Win the AFC by Super Bowl. That's it. It's their goal every year with 15. Doesn't matter how you get there. That's the goal. That is the goal and the expectation mm -hmm. for the, the biggest part. Yeah. So, obviously, that expectation is uh, in full force this offseason. We had a, a very interesting uh, hey, you know, news day. How did that make harder? Yeah, that's that's saying something. But a lot of news broke today. The end of the uh, or the first day after the combine. Who's ended. in charge of breaking that news? Who's the guy that makes those decisions? The job that might have just got harder. Yeah, Tom, Tom go Tom ahead, take answer. it. Tom has the answer. Oh, no, I was saying it's my oh. uh, my job's harder. So now I have to watch more draft prospects. Well, yeah, that's but what I'm saying we got to talk about it more. You're I, doing I like that. Our job's Who, who's doing it for the Chiefs? Oh, but, well. His yeah. scouts are doing it. Sure, but now it's his his job just got a lot more. It gets a lot more difficult when your expectation every single year is retool and aim for the same aim for the same point. It's not. Yeah, it's, he was the one who said it though. He, I know, but that's because <laughs> they, they've embraced the i the understanding of the reality of it. That's what their reality is. At least they've embraced it. But it doesn't make the fact easier that that makes his job damn. That's a Basically. lot. And well, I said this. Hard. I said this after the Super Bowl win, and mm -hmm. this is and and I. It's like, it's like Brett Veach wants to speed run the NFL on hard mode or something, and it's, it's like, like you know that man. that could be the the thumbnail. It's like you know, uh, speed running NFL on uh, or NFL off season insane difficulty. Yeah, watch me win. Man, you know, all the time. Um, 
I, the, Brent Veach is one of the best GMs, if not the best GM in football. And he's acting like it. And that's, I mean, I know we're in the weeds and we have a couple other things to talk about first, but that's, but yeah, let's talk about the other things. The first thing on our list, and then we can talk about the, the fun stuff. Yeah, Ready, yeah. Set, so, go, so before, before today, there was a little bit of news that happened since the last time we talked to you guys. Uh, obviously, earlier, we talked uh, Eric Bieniemy departing for Washington to become their new offensive coordinator. Uh, we predict last week that it was pretty much expected that Matt Nagy, the uh, the quarterback's coach. The dancing coach, king! Yeah, he would uh, be promoted to offensive coordinator, and he was. That was pretty much expected. And uh, another pr- pretty much expected move, uh, David Girardi, assistant quarterback coach slash pass game analyst, gets promoted to the full-time quarterback coach. Did he get any other title besides that? I mean, uh, just... No, I don't. It may have been internally expected. I mean, but he Andy might Reed still be a pass kinda... game analyst for them, but Andy he's now Reed the just quarterback. Coach. That one in at the press conference on Monday of this week or whatever it was. He was just like, and yeah, Joe Girardi's, you know, the QB coach, and it was like, wait, what? Huh? Huh? What was that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was kind of just slipped, slipped it in there. The, uh, you know, just an upcoming coach in the ranks of Andy Reid. He's been there for quite some time. Now getting the the nod to be in the same room with Pat and uh, be his be his right hand guy. Tom, um, five years with them now for him. Is that what you told me earlier? Three, yeah, with five three years with, as the other thing, and then two. Yep, three as offensive quality control, two as assistant quarterback coach slash passing game analyst. Yeah, and so, so now this will be his his first year as quarterback coach. He's a guy. I think if I remember right, he's a big uh, analytics guy, but he's a guy that they. Um, a couple years ago, him and uh, – oh, goodness, I'd have to look his name up. Uh, another guy who's still on the staff who they started as quality control coaches and are working their way up through the Andy Reid coaching ranks. Um, give me a moment, I'll look him up. But, yeah, Girardi's a, a name to know in the organization. Should be an interesting mesh with his analytics background and Patrick's um, defiance of that entire category of the entirety of the sport because every time you look at one of those charts, it's, it's him and then – well, I actually have that backwards when you look at the string on the screen. I guess it's it's him over here, and then everybody else is somewhere in this range. So, should be right. interesting to see how that marriage works. Um, I say he's as Garrett there. mentioned, kind of expected with Nagy. Yeah, and he's been there. David Girardi has been there since uh, obviously Pat's been there, so they've at least have a connection already. They know each other, so well, that relationship should work a lot easier. You would think the with transition. the passing game analyst position, he's probably spent a fair amount of time with Patrick before this yeah. point. So you also would assume Patrick has some input on whoever's quarterback coaching him, I would guess, right. at this point. Uh, Corey Mathai was the other one. He's the assistant offensive line coach. He's been with the Chiefs for 10 years. Was an assistant quarterback coach, quality control coach, um, and also spent five years in Philadelphia with uh, with Andy. I'm surprised he, didn't, he might have been in the conversation, but he's another guy that probably we'll see a promotion maybe um, when um, Andy Heck retires. Cause I know he's not a young, a young guy, but yeah, yeah. definitely. So that was kind of the news of, of last week, week last week. There really wasn't much else. A lot of the news oh, broke uh, today, Monday. Uh, Can I pull my hair out now? Can we do that now? Cause that's where we're at. Yeah. Now, right? It was yeah. a pretty, pretty chaotic day. Two reports came out kind of back to back. First one being, uh, the Chiefs do not plan on franchise tagging Orlando Brown Jr., the uh, the left tackle that we traded first round pick and a whole lot more for a couple, just two years ago. Um, ended up not going with the franchise tag route. Seems like they've uh, they kind of shopped him around this combine week, uh, kind of evaluated their options, and the kind of the consensus is that they might have a long term deal in place that uh, they kind of offered him and said, you know, take it or leave it because they're looking for a long-term option. doesn't seem like they wanted to do anything short-term at left tackle. Um, no. Which would be tagging him. That uh, may be even, the I only tag and trading thing him. Brett said in the press conference. Yeah. So obviously they didn't want to tag him or tag and trade him. I guess they didn't find much of a market for him. Um, so it's either kind of, you know, it's either they, they sign a long-term deal before I believe next week is – Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so they the have for that. They March thirteenth is right the open right free agency. For the next seven days, starting mm-hmm. next on the thirteenth of next week is when free agency opens. If yeah, so that, that they long, don't have so a deal in place now that the they one. are not tagging him because the deadline to make your tag decisions, I believe, was today at like four. I believe so. Mm-hmm. Four mm-hmm. Eastern, three Arrowhead, if I'm not mistaken. Um mm-hmm. so well, with- hold on, it's technically tomorrow. Sorry, yeah. tomorrow. 
Yeah. So okay. they will. Um, but the anticipation is he won't be tagged, which means they're either negotiating a long term deal, which <clears throat> I doubt they're negotiating the deal at this point. As Garrett mentioned, they seem to have drawn their line in the sand on a number that they're not willing to cross. And now they're willing to let Orlando go see if he can find that number on the open market. Um, if he can't, there's a chance he comes back to Kansas City, I think. If he can, that's what we call talked about the Super Bowl tax boys all last episode. Mm-hmm. And now the only thing I don't like about that, as opposed to the at least tagging him, is with the non-exclusive, they could force if somebody did come in and try to pay him, they could force the team to give up some picks for him. Whereas now you're just trying to get a comp pick. Especially if you're not going to use that tag on another guy, which they don't really have a whole lot of other candidates for that tag. So mm-hmm. that's the only part that doesn't make a ton of sense to me based on what Brett's done in the past. Um, so that that's the part that gives me pause and makes me think that they may be pretty confident in the deal that they have laid out for him and aren't worried about him going to market. Uh, it's an interesting gamble to play with. We saw Brett gamble with the Lamons thing in the playoffs and the Bengals picked him up and when they weren't really probably anticipated to. And it yeah. now it worked out because Marcus Kemp ended up being a huge piece that ended up being needed in that Bengals Pretty game. Important. Pretty important. Pretty important. He got yeah. hurt. But yeah. still, that wasn't supposed to go that way. And it was a gamble and it didn't all it always didn't always pay off. So it's it's an interesting thing, and I'm sure we're gonna discuss the multitude of ways that now we have to go about replacing this. I'm just not necessarily a fan of not protecting yourself from an asset perspective unless you're extraordinarily certain in what you're doing. So there's a lot of things going on right now. One of the things we, the three of us talked about before the show is just the timing of all this. There's two, two critical components. One, we're, we're on the heels of the NFL combine, which is where all the trade rumors and free agency stuff, like this is really where free agency starts. Um, you know, I, I cover enough draft stuff and, and people will tell you, you know, this is where we, I mean, like you could have known that Derek Carr was going to be a saint last week, or you could have known, you know, um, you know, we start hearing more trade rumors, all this stuff starts to kick up now because that's, that's where a lot of this stuff happens. That's where a lot of teams meet with agents. It's kind of the biggest, the big, um, Tom, it's really, it really is the start of things for yeah. the off season. And so that, that tells me a couple of things. One, I assure you that there were talks both with, you know, Brett Veach and, and his, and, and Orlando Brown's, you know, representation, um, not just today or not just, you know, recently for the first time they've had these ongoing talks, but I promise you Brett was, was checking the temperature on a potential like tag and trade market. We talked about that last episode. Um, and, and what I reading the tea leaves a little bit here, what I think is happening is the returns on Orlando Brown were going to be pretty minimal. Um, they would have to be so like you're in this weird window where if you let him walk and he goes signs a massive top five contract deal um, like he wants, he you're going to probably fetch a, a third round comp pick for him next year, right? Which isn't great. I mean, that's that's a consolation prize. There's your yeah, trophy. You don't sign any comp picks that would take away from that third round comp pick. Correct. Now. Um, I will also add that the Chiefs have a bunch of other free agents that we were already skeptical about them being able to keep, i.e. Juan Thornhill, McCole. Um, we also have uh, Tommy Thompson's on there. There's another one I'm forgetting. Um, oh, Juju. We may, I mean, Juju, Juju we, we want to keep. Saunders. Yeah, Colin Saunders. So there's some guys out there who could, again, with a Super Bowl tax, with the draft position, all that stuff, we could see them, you know, playing into that formula. So you have the opportunity to kind of play the game a little bit with – with that, where you can you know, get those replacement level players, kind of a one for one. If if McColl walks and gets a, let's say he gets a three year you know deal somewhere, averaging ten or twelve million, right? You you have that to kind of play with, and that'll that'll kind of cancel out. So, uh, and you don't play for the comp picks, but you you keep it in the back of your mind. But when you're talking in those in those trade talks with teams, you're probably going, can I get you know a fourth and a fifth? Can I get you know a, a third this year and a fifth next year? Can I get you know any type of value? A little bit sooner for Orlando, and the answer had to be no, which also means in Kansas City's mind they're sitting there and they're thinking his market may not be as strong as he even thinks it is, right? Because if teams aren't, I mean, we we talk about all the times, you know, left tackles don't, you know, it's a valuable position in the NFL. 
Okay, and if a right. team's if a team's not willing to give up a mid a mid round pick for a guy like that, right? Um, now, and, and you're gonna well, well, the Chiefs did it, right? If the Chiefs well, did do it, right? But they also got picks back in return, so and, and they got a Super Bowl out of it, right? Well, they're, they're on the the winner side exactly. of this. You have to bear in mind, and I don't remember. I heard there was a radio host, I think, or somebody on a radio spot mention this, and I had not really thought about it at that point until now, but. When that trade for Orlando Brown happened, the Chiefs were one of only a few teams in the league that were in the market on him for that trade because they were one of the mm-hmm. only a few teams in the league that believed he could be a left tackle. Yeah, yeah, that is the thing. So he's, he already he a, had a, a smaller system. market when he left mm-hmm. Baltimore. And while he's played well, he's not played elite. He's not been a yeah. difference mm-hmm. maker necessarily. Um, he's been... A, a good left tackle, which has been good mm-hmm. enough to keep Patrick up and let Patrick do Patrick things for the most part. That's what you asked him to do. Now, did we pay a little more than that? Yes, but you had to because what do you pay for when you're in the trade market? You pay more. That's why it works. Yeah. So I think the mm-hmm. conversation is more important. And this is where, Tom, I think your point to where they figured out they think his market may be lower. That's the mm-hmm. only explanation I have for the non-exclusive tag to not leave Mm -hmm. themselves protection for those for the pick replenishment from the non-exclusive tag, because that return on those draft picks is a lot higher than the comp pick formula. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, uh, and again, the, the, you, there's something in the, in that, in those conversations where Brett and his team realized that um, the value, I'll just say this, I'll say it this way. Orlando Brown as the Chiefs left tackle is probably in the most ideal situation for him. And I think this team probably values him the most, right, at, than any other team. And if they're not willing to pay, right? Now, I'm not saying there's not a team. I think I mentioned in the, in the pregame or the pre-show, you know, huddle that we're talking through, um, you know, a team like Chicago might throw the bag Chicago, at him. Tennessee. But yeah. Tennessee, yeah. But then you have a chance, again, obviously, to – recoup that that pick um and you're not and and we talked about this last show and i know this was was controversial but one of the things that the language that we keep hearing about in this conversation is the chiefs want a long-term solution at left tackle which we all want right and so and they all and they wanted their six mm -hmm. years 100 and well 130 six years 139 it was really like three years 70 i think but yeah a lot of fun um, money in there for sure. And so this this goes back to one of my opening statements, which is or not Andy Reid, but Brett Veach is standing on his standing his ground. And this is important because you can't be held hostage by players like this in negotiations. And it's hard. It's hard because we're all anxious and we're going, man, like, you know, we could be a lot worse. We listen, I remember the days of Jordan Black, I-65 right. at don't, left don't. tackle. <laughs> I'm I'm not right trying. Here. Why did you bring that? Man, I'm sorry. Think- I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I need you. To, I need you to edit this and go back and put a trigger warning in. Um, <laughs> I listen. I was there. Who was the other I guy? Uh, come on. Who was the other early. guy? Uh, no, that was right tackle. Uh, Damian Damian McIntosh from the Dolphins. Stop it! Stop! Stop! I sixty five was bad enough. You don't need. Um, listen, that, I, I know. Yeah, that I know, I know I the pain. Ever my seen. brothers, my sisters, I know the pain, and I would not ever advocate for that. I will say yeah. a couple things though. One, Patrick Mahomes makes up for a lot of inadequacies with your offensive line. Two, um, injuries or not, and listen, you guys know. I mean, you guys could go through the the podcast history. We had a whole emergency podcast when Orlando Brown got traded to the Chiefs. We were the I had been advocates. pounding that table yeah. mm-hmm. for for months, and I, and I still believe in him as a player. Don't don't get me wrong, but what he put but. on the tape this year what he put on the field, injuries or whatever else, you know, be damned, isn't top five money, right? I mean, like we said. And, and I think if he was if he was willing, it sound, and, and then here's the other part of this that we probably isn't going to be talked about, just to be really blunt about it. Orlando's got made some questionable decisions with his agent hire and his representation, and he's probably yeah. shooting himself in, a, in the foot a little bit because I – I, you get the sense this guy doesn't know what he's doing by turning down the deal last well, year. Well, it's kind of tough to know if he knows what he's doing since I'm not sure he knows the answer to that question, seeing yeah, as this thing. is his first NFL player, and it happens to be a guy that's trying to become a top-five player at a position. 
I'm and just saying I'm not sure. In the pre-show too, it's like he bet on himself this year essentially with getting that agent and getting, you know, declining mm-hmm. that deal to to try to prove himself, and he kind of lost. Like he kind of he kind of well, lost. Well, we don't know yet. We'll see. I mean, yeah. I'm just and saying. It, yeah. I, I think what Tom said was very. I think something Tom said was true about having a very specific <clears throat> market. Like if you think about when yeah. the Chiefs traded for him, really there wasn't a whole lot of other suitors. Because he is very specific. I mean, you're talking about a guy who really is a right tackle, if we're really being honest with that ourselves, you to left that tackle. you are making him a left tackle. And so you mm-hmm. have you have to have a very specific scheme that can kind of accommodate that. Something a little more run-heavy, probably, which is why like a Tennessee or a Chicago makes sense. Um, for the Chiefs, though, they already know what they have in him. They've already developed him to be more of a vertical passer. Uh, mm-hmm. Why not stay on that course because no other team's going to bet on him to be a vertical pass pass setting left tackle except for the chiefs because they know that they already have been on that course with him if you get mm-hmm. what i'm saying like yeah it would really make sense for everyone including orlando brown mostly to to stick with the chiefs and continue to be a left like an actual left tackle because who i mean i don't know maybe there will be a, a surprise team that comes out and really pays him and wants him to be that for them mm-hmm. but it's I don't know. It's especially with the tape that you saw this year and the injury history. It's it's tough for me to believe he's gonna get or have a huge market when he uh, when if he if he tests free agency. I don't know that the market will be huge, but I do think he'll have some teams that are gonna be willing to pay him some money. I, I don't know. See, that's that a, it's, draft it's, pick. I that's why I don't think the trade market. Yeah, I think the draft pick thing is is a thing because you're. Draft, it's telling. You're trading a pick, and you're also having to pay him a big contract. So you're not going to play him on the tag. Obviously. Which is what Kansas City did, and that's because, as we mm-hmm. just talked about, they yeah. were one of the only teams to believe in him in that facet, and they didn't really so pay really him big money. They just had to be willing to tag him and pay him the tag, and then deal mm-hmm. with this portion of the stuff now. And mm-hmm. I would put Baltimore on the list of teams that would need a left tackle like that, but they uh, paid Ronnie yep. Stanley, and he hasn't played in two years. So in that mm-hmm. relationship, is probably but, and, but that's there. that's a prime example. And again, Orlando's been healthy for the most part. You know, going to be you talk about the possible much injury. Healthier. Much healthier. Yeah, it just it's it's tough as a fan because you're worried about what's going to happen next. But I go back to let's remember that that Brett Veach blew up an entire the entire offensive line five five new starters in a year. Yeah. Yeah. And that turned out pretty all right. And, so, and so there's with him all right tough tag, decisions that you have to make. As well, and this is this is the Patriots stuff. This is the mm-hmm. type of crap that you don't overpay good players. Right. You, you pay, pay great him. players. Yes. You, and, you play. And it's not like the Chiefs haven't given Orlando Brown every opportunity he's wanted as a player. Oh, he's been he's been a have. leader. He's been all you know, they they value him in the locker room. It's not like it, it, it's yeah, it, it, but this is the business the business part of it. And again, we talked about this before. Orlando knows the business part of it. He wanted more security. He wanted, you know, his his dad's career was was ended by a fluke thing, and, and he knows better than anybody that those things can happen that was in so an cool. instant. Yeah, and and that's that's all. You know, again, it's it's fair. It's fair for both sides. I think yeah. if anything, it, there's there's maybe even a part of it that's even more um, positive for. Orlando, it's almost an act of good faith to not tag him again because players don't like playing on the tag. No, you know, it just don't. It's, it's hard, and that would have that would have really, you know, I think. Well, I think that would have sealed the chances chance of the deal. Yeah, exactly of a deal happening later. Like I mm-hmm. think that's. I, I secretly, I, I secretly think that there might still be something that happens with him. There might be a deal in place that he might just end up taking because, at the end of the day, well, like we said, the the, the options. Combine. We just talked about the combine and the Chiefs doing their mm-hmm. homework. If his yeah. agent can spell the word agent, he was at that combine trying to figure out what his client, mm-hmm. his right. NFL I mean, client, should, yeah, the only be, NFL client he has that that I know of, yeah, I, I would be at that combine true. figuring out what his market is. I yeah. think everybody knows kind of what Orlando Brown's mm-hmm. market is so, at this point. So that's very also, limited. Again. They, they, he must. They were. They were probably offered him like, "Oh, I'll give you a fifth round pick for him," and that's not worth it for Kansas City. They'd rather let him hit the market, and you have two options: he gets paid a big deal, and you get a, a third round pick next year, or, or you get him back cheap. You get him back cheaper. And, right? you and, and hold still, your, like you hold can still line. structure a deal with him that suits him well, but still is friendly for the team. Like it can work out for both sides. We've seen it mm-hmm. plenty of times. And the other thing you yeah. mentioned, Garrett, besides the tag being a t- – players hate that tag, especially the second one, and it being a respect <laughs> thing from that level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's also 
a $20 million guaranteed cap hit that they have to carry on their books for the next several months until they either a get a deal done before the de- the deadline, or he plays on that $20 million number, which they really don't want. Yeah. Cause that's, I mean, that is so, ideal. You sign him for something that's less than 20 million. For Tom sure. has At been, and I don't year. know if he's mentioned it yet now, but that's why I want to bring this, that part of it up. The timing of all this stuff. He's mentioned it a little bit. We talked about it pre-show. I know he probably he talked about it a little bit in his previous answer, but the timing of this, that Orlando Brown move, not locking in that $20 million. And the next topic we have to go to, which is the cutting or the expected cutting, I should say, of Frank Clark that was announced today. Yeah. Shortly Talk after, a little bit about after. the timing of those two moves, and then we'll go into the Frank mm-hmm. Clark side since we're done with Orlando. Yeah, well, let's just let's just look at this plain cold cold fact numbers. So, with the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl, they hit a lot of incentives. Juju Smith-Schuster hit a lot of incentives. Patrick Mahomes hit a lot of incentives. A lot of the players hit those um, incentives in their contracts that bumps your contract up. Actually, the Chiefs were headed to be in positive uh, cap space until they won the Super Bowl. It's just again, we talk about the Super Bowl tax. This is part of it. So, as of today, right? Because none of the, the moves have officially been processed. The Chiefs are sitting at negative four million dollars. In cap space the after Chiefs, rolling over a ton of money and that they were, yes. or were going to yep. be rolling over a ton of money until yes. as tom mentioned all those not likely mm-hmm. to be earned incentives we talked about for like six months last year yeah those all came due because guess what boys and girls they, they became, became earned. earned so the chiefs were sitting at four negative four million you cut frank clark today right uh, pre-june 1st that expected bumps you frank clark yes expected um, that saves you 20 million. That bumps you up to 16, nine. So 17 million, right? If you tag Orlando Brown, which you have to do by tomorrow, you're negative again, you are back to negative 3 million. And there's not really any places to go to save you 3 million without a last minute negotiation. Somebody giving up money, Chris Jones, Joe Tooney, Travis Kelsey, Justin <clears> Reed. <throat> Mahomes automatically, but that's all right. Yes, well, and we were talking about that pre-show, and and again, Connor, I'm not sure Connor, do anything with that. somebody page Connor Christopherson, see if he's around. Um, I'm not sure when the deadline for him restructuring is, um, but I, I I think this is where I think that this would be a surprise a little bit because I think uh, Brett Feach and them are smarter than this. But it's I, I think if I'm reading it correctly, the the window for that restructure might fall between the deadline for uh, the franchise tag. And the start of free agency, I could be misinterpreting that. But again, somebody tag Connor in this if you're listening on Twitter, and he'll correct me and make me um, the much smarter guy than I am and all that stuff. But yes, you you have to make some cap space up here. Um, the Chiefs have a ton of cap space starting next year. We're talking 100 million plus because they don't have a lot of guys on on the books for that 2024 and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah and that will change. They're gonna move some things around. Um, you know, they're going to, there's, that makes it possible for Chris Jones to get something done. Um, when you cut, um, you know, Clark, you have Tooney who you can, you can play some money with. Um, you know, there's some other guys that are going to need deals, but, um, but they had, they, to, they had to not tag Orlando and look mm-hmm. at the Frank move before tomorrow, because that's when they have to be under, or under the, cap, under the right. cap. Yeah. Yeah. Which well, I don't, do let me let me do with their car. So anyway, let no. me finagle that. Hold on, let me let me amend that because it's, they don't have to be under the cap by tomorrow. They have to make the franchise tag decision by tomorrow. By tomorrow, they, have, they have to be under the under the, the, under the tag by the thirteenth. Yeah, the thirteenth or the sixteenth. I think thirteenth is the legal tampering. Sixteenth is when um, free agency opens. And again, I I could be misunderstanding, but I think the kind of the hiccup here is that restructure date falls between those two days. The deadline for the restructure. Right. I, and, and again, we talked about this pre-show. It also comes down to uh, you know Clark Hunt being willing to write a check for twenty plus million oh, or forty money. plus million dollars. Yeah, and, and again, Patrick's going to get that money regardless. But it's a cash flow thing. Um, but I, you know, the Chiefs. Not that I'm exactly scary. concerned about Clark's cash flow, but yeah, yeah, it, yeah. scary times. But I, I think we're gonna. Be okay, guys. I, I, I try not to be count okay. another man's pocket, but that yeah. dude. <laughs> I think we'll be good on that. I I think uh, it is a very telling kind of. Uh, they just won a Super Bowl, right? How Wasn't he pretty forgiving much with is... after the Super Bowl last time? <laughs> Isn't that what happened? Mark, I remember yeah, right. I think it, it, it wasn't that wasn't that the Mahomes contract year where they 
first. Oh, reason. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's worth yep. just fine. Him and the whole family. So the, the two billion. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. The Hunt family as a whole is okay. about fifteen point five billion. Mm -hmm. Okay. They could yeah. probably so, afford it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not probably, okay. Like I said. Again, so, I don't yeah. like counting people's cash flow pockets or whatnot. Uh, but I, mean, I, I mean, feel like they're, they're going to be fine if they need to make those moves. They just yeah. won a Super Bowl, and if I remember right, after they won the Super Bowl last time, he was pretty pretty good on cash and was pretty forgiving with the with the contract. Yeah. So ultimately, yeah. the structure going forward for the Chiefs, it seems like they're we kind of talked about it pre show. So it's a different philosophy of uh, of not really paying players. Uh, uh, you know, at the wrong time, it might be paying play like Frank Clark, especially at the thing where he like at that number, it would have been tough to restructure. I think he couldn't I think play at that number. Yeah. I think it's very likely that he tests the market and ends up maybe coming back on a, on a one year deal eventually okay. somewhere down the line. Who are we talking uh, about? I'm sorry. Frank, I was Clark, about... Frank Clark. Yeah. I think that there's, <sighs> that's, I'm glad, you, I'm, I'm glad you said that Garrett, because I wanted to ask this question Okay. with, and because I have been probably the one of the few Frank Clark defenders in in the Chiefs kingdom for a this while. Podcast has yeah done a, lot. Um, done a lot. No, I'm talking about the whole fan base, homie. It's not just you two. Uh, it's it's been like me, BJ Kissel, and like three other people that have been routinely telling people how important Frank is to this team. Jordan Foot, friend of the show, tweeted something today that. I have been banging the drum about with for Frank for a while that I think is going to be the thing that if he is not on this roster and in that room is going to be something that somebody has to step up and fill a void on yeah. the leadership and the love and teammate respect that he had in that locker room. It not matched by many guys, if any, mm -hmm. like 15, 1587 that's probably like the other and especially guy. this this year we talked about that a lot about how there's kind of a lack of leadership in the locker room per se you're looking for that next wave of guys to step up but frank clark was the guy who was already there like he and was i talked the leader about of the defense. frank at nauseum training camp and the extra time with not only Carlo Carloftis at first, but it turned into the Frank Clark Everybody. School pass rush yeah. there for like two weeks at training camp in St. Joe after practice. That mattered this year, guys. All those dudes got better. And Joe Cullen made a big difference. And Joe Cullen is a fantastic coach. Frank Clark made a difference, too, because he spent the extra time and showed those kids that he cared and that he wants them to get better. And he's worried about them, not just him. Knowing he's playing on this kind of a deal, knowing that at the end of this season, he may not be wearing that jersey next year because it's a business. Frank's very open and, know and knows about the business. He tweeted today. Always appreciative of the ups and downs. Peace yep. and love. Like, he, they get it. It's a business. But I'm more interested to see, A, how, what you guys think if he does find a way back because of what you guys think his market looks like on the free agent market, because that's something to keep in mind. He's going to, he's 29. Mm -hmm. He's not 30. He's really only 29. That's crazy. He's 29. I guess we traded for what? He was 26 when we traded for him. Yeah. So he's 29. He's got a couple of rings and he's shown that he can be a lead. Like we just talked about a leader, a bunch of young, bunch of young guys, teams love that stuff and pay for it. So I'm, yeah. I'm thinking he's going to have at least a little bit of a market that's more substantial than some people might think, especially in this fan base because of how he's been viewed for so long. Although I, it is nice to see the uh, tone turn over the last month or two with his play down the stretch and them yeah. kind of love him again. But There's that's all separate. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the things I'm interested about. And then if he is gone, does, is Chris – we saw Chris, if you watched the mic'd up, you saw Chris kind of take charge of that D-line room and basically say, hey, stop screwing up. Some of this game is our fault because we're blowing assignments everywhere. Can he continue to do that and take those next steps and be that Frank Clark type of leader and be that guy? I think so, so for sure. I – Something that I think is going to be really important for Frank Clark. And we, we Kyle said, you know, he's got a couple of rings. I don't think Frank is going to go to a team that is – Frank's made money trash. in his career. See it, trash. He's going to – he wants to go to – because if I'm Frank Clark, there's one other thing on my agenda, right? Playoff sacks. All of fame. Playoff sacks. And I am and two game, sacks yeah. away. Two sacks away. Oh. Exactly. Being, you guarantee your Hall of Fame if you get that from record. From being, yeah. yes. 
Especially if you have two rings to go. I'm with. 39 years old. It's or not 39. I'm 29 years old. Plus, I'd still be trying at 39 if I needed Plus, two yeah. to get yeah. Yeah. Two You you need to make the playoffs every year. Mm -hmm. Justin yeah. Herbert don't make the playoffs every year. The Eagles don't make the playoffs every year. The they Giants, might now. Oh, they might. The, they I mean, might now. Yeah, the there's a lot of teams. Hurts. There's a lot of I teams, think, right? I think definitely legacy is still on Frank's mind. He's made, I mean, he's made a mm -hmm. fair share of money. He's been paid a couple times, right, in his career. Um, really, I mean, I, adding more rings, like, that's, I don't know what, I mean, you could go, I think he, really, I think he could still go get a bag from a team, uh, okay. especially that bets on all those factors. It's about overall happiness, though. Like, if, especially if you think about, Mm -hmm. You know what he went through this past year and everything, everything that's kind of gone on in his in his time in Kansas City. Like he's had a long few years in Kansas yeah, City. Yeah, it's like at this point, that. I feel like you want to prioritize well, happiness and and establishing roots in a place and it'll legacy be interesting. over anything else. But well, and he knows. Yeah. Yeah. This organization knows him. He knows this organization. I think there's you know they have there's... a special. They talked about him and Andy. Reed. Andy Reid and Frank have a very special relationship. Well, like, Frank talked about that a little bit. That's a father figure at this point, and he just lost his actual father. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's pretty big. Things you get, definitely got to consider when if you're Frank. Now, obviously, you know, this combine, there was reports that they did a lot of talks with his agent. They couldn't mm -hmm. agree to a restructure. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Which sure that's they just... They can't restructure. It has to be an extension. So the, yeah. Exactly. It's tough to kind of just... Literally, just say like, yeah, we're just, it's not a restructure; it's a pay cut, is what it would have been, mm -hmm. and it's kind yeah. of hard to hard to do that. It's more. Hey, you want a Super Bowl pay cut? Exactly. Yeah. That's that's hard not to do the, it. that's not the the correct way. I think. I think he tests. Well, obviously, he'll test free agency. I think he'll just chill. Honestly, I think he'll probably chill through training camp. Probably. I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know that you're gonna see Frank don't, in any in any. Yeah. Unless somebody backs up. Unless he gets a Christian Kirk type of a, deal. Exactly. No one's. He, he's he's gonna be sitting at home. Oh man, it's July. I guess I can get off the couch, do some sit ups, and sign a contract. So that's, yeah. I mean, that's the Frank so, Clark plan if I'm him. But so here's, yeah, I mean, here's my hats off to Frank. I'm, I'm going to do this. This is my deal on it. Um, I've been very open about what I think he brings to this team. I would be a little bit surprised if I think they're doing him a solid by not trying to do anything weird with his deal um, so, and just yeah. kind of let him see what the market is and then let him decide, Hey, that I already know what Kansas city is willing to give me because he has to know by now what Casey's at with him. As far as numbers are concerned, as Garrett oh, yeah. just mentioned, they had multiple talks at the combine with the agent. They did all this. Here's my numbers from you guys. Here's, here's what I know I can get here and what it, and what I, what I've got. Let me see if there's anything situationally out there that also monetarily is in the range that makes sense for me to go do. If it doesn't, I'm probably coming back here. That's how I think he's probably approaching it, and they're probably going into it with that. That said, four days ago, Nate Taylor wrote an article about Chris Jones's biggest offseason wish. And four days later, the Chiefs are expected to release Chris Jones's biggest offseason wish, which was to keep him and Frank Clark together. Now, that said, cutting Frank Clark frees up, what did you say, Tom? $20 million. Okay. Chris Jones's right. cap hit this year was an identical cap hit to what Frank Clark is scheduled to be paid. And Chris Jones is in the final year of his deal coming off a career year where he basically cemented himself as the number, if not one, two by a comfortable stretch between three, one B, one A conversation with an Probably Aaron Donald one. type. Probably one. Um, well, this year he was. And analytically, he was as dominant as Donald's been in Donald's dominant seasons also. So. You could say that, yes, but he's also not done it as long as AD did, so I think that's probably that conversation there. Regardless, he's on the last year of his deal, and it's twenty-eight million dollar cap hit. You're cutting his you're his cutting his biggest wish of the offseason for the article Nate wrote, which if you've read it, it's a very good article and it makes sense. You have to get a deal done with Chris. Now, oh, yeah. you there's not this it's he happened. has to be extended. 
he well, he has to be extended because you you can't yeah. have him play out this deal and not have him locked up or or have stability going forward because then where's his head at this year? And you just cut his biggest wish <laughs> and freed up all this money. And now you need to sign him and show him that we pay the superstars because we're when well, we just talk about we're getting rid of the good players because they're too expensive. But you have to pay the great ones. And it's it's about being and identifying the talent correctly. The Patriots model was being out on guys a year early, not five years early. Mm-hmm. So now that you've done this and these are the steps and the st- spots you've taken. For me. Chris Jones's re- extension became bullet point number one this offseason. As if it wasn't already, mm-hmm. it is now bullet point one by the same gap it is between him and the next defensive tackle, not named Darren Donald. You have the money to make it work in the, in the coming seasons. There's no, I mean, be responsible, yeah. but if you're going to pay somebody, pay somebody, right? It's him. That's the you person have to pay. pay. Yeah, that's the person. And it makes sense. Pay. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, like, um, and then you uh, pay him, and then you sense. say, hey, I'm paying you, and we're extending you so that we can free up more cap space so that if Frank does come back, we can afford to have him come back. Exactly. There's, because you can't – give and a take there. You can't keep cutting pieces off of this team that keeps producing for you and not paying guys and expect guys to, to either expect free agent deals once they get done being rookies here Mm-hmm. Or expect free agents that are coming in to to expect loyalty or any kind of longevity here. Yep, that is you very have, true. There's a, a there's a balance between team building. rewarding the guys that get you where you've gotten, and getting out of of guys when they're getting ready to decline or slightly starting to decline or at that year early mark. Which is kind of which, the, the one of that's the downfalls what, that John Dorsey. Yeah. Yes, which is what blew up with John, and that's exactly. kind of where – that's what they've decided they're going to do with – Frank mm-hmm. is that way. They've kind of seemed to address Orlando as, we think you're worth this. If you're not, you're done. So mm-hmm. with Chris – It's going to be set on that strategy, you know. With it's Chris, like, you're that he's the guy. You drafted yeah. him into this franchise. You've de- He's developed under you, and he's been the horse you've been riding to now two Super Bowls on that defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. He's – and he's, he's entering been, his prime. The superstar. This I think it's was definitely year one of his prime that. time play. Yeah, you got to set mm-hmm. that standard as a team and as from the contract standpoint of like, yeah, we're going to pay the superstars. Everybody else, if you're too, if you're just good, like there's not going to be good. You're good and demand too much money. Sorry, dude. Exactly. Like it's, <laughs> it's, you have to, you know, it has to, it has to be a fine line or a, a strong line. You know, it's like, Hey, superstar status. That's who gets paid. That's, that's well, everyone else. Those are the everyone else. If you want to continue to be on the team. Yeah, yeah. Don't overpay. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Cause the, you know, the superstars we'll are about, the only guys you can overpay. Yeah, and you really can't as we'll talk about right hard. here coming up into our, this transitions well to our next topic. We have two, well, we have a couple of free agents that, uh, we have a lot that might need to get paid. But particularly two that are kind of of interest this week, Nicole Hardman and Juan Thornhill, um, both who I think reportedly can get a pretty decent, have a decent market out there for them. They could both get some from hefty deals. It's about whether, you know, they want to come back for a lesser cost. Cause it's definitely going to be less to uh, to stay with the Chiefs. So one of two things is going to happen this offseason. And I suggested the last time the Chiefs were in the situation, I thought they were going to do the first one, which is lean into the rebuild. Um, which what is, um, don't do that. hey, I'm going to let some guys walk. We're probably going to find some replacement level players. We're going to play the comp pick formula. We're going to draft really well. And the last time I thought, you know, they were in that position was when they were replacing their offensive line and you know they you know that type of thing hey tom where'd they go that year to the super bowl <laughs> um that no, let me let me clarify brev each is aggressive right so the other the option too is you just start clearing cap like a mofo you go get you get chris jones resigned you have patrick mahomes restructured you have picks that you're gonna trade 
you know, you go get some people, right? We've already, we're, the, the rumors are already starting. The rumor mill started. There's going to be some guys who are going to get cut or they're going to get released. There's going to be some guys who get traded, right? And this is, this is where Brett Beach is going to make his money. This is, um, you know, he has, uh, I, I know, uh, gosh, shout out to our friend uh, Jordan Foote over at Arrowhead Report. Before all this, this and news KCSN. came out, and KCSN, um, he, they did a, um, I don't remember if Jordan wrote it, but I know I shared it. He shared it, and I, I was interacting with it. Uh, Leonard Floyd from with the with the Rams is a guy who's you know on the market or could be cut. Uh, I'm gonna remind you that people who get cut don't count against the 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 comp pick formula. Uh, people you trade for don't count, you know. So and that's a guy with no guaranteed money on his on his uh, deal, who's you know a good a, a solid average pass rusher. Um, so. You could get really aggressive and, you know, again, play the comp pick game, or you go get really aggressive and you go get guys, right? You, you do what you did the first year. It's, all right, here's Honey Badger, here's Sammy Watkins, here's, you know, Frank Clark, here's this guy, here's that guy. Load up on new tire match. Uh, and you reach well because you are in a position. Now, you have to bring, you have to be able to bring some back, bring back some of your guys where there is a contract pinch because you're going to have, you know, Creed and Trey and Nick, all three of uh, Nick Bolton, all three of those guys, same draft class. Legereus Sneed probably needs a deal, probably deserves a deal. I that's a whole conversation for another time. We should keep Sneed in Kansas City. Um yes. oh, you don't want to trade him? I was heard that was a good topic. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're gonna trade Legereus Sneed and Joe Tooney's gonna play left tackle, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go trade for Derrick Henry. Oh, we're gonna yeah. do this week. You had um, to do it. And DeAndre <laughs> Hopkins, or can we have D Hop too? And and the, uh, no, okay. we're gonna trade for DeAndre Hopkins okay. and Michael okay. Thomas. On the comp pick game that Tom is referring to. I'm going to give you what Connor has as his anticipated potential comp picks based on what he the markets for contracts are for the guys listed, okay? Mm-hmm. Third round pick for Orlando because that's what you can get for a guy like that. It's the best you can get is the third for comp picks. Juju and McColl, fourths. Juan and Andrew Wiley, fifths. In the 2024 draft, if, as Tom mentioned, you don't bring anybody that eats into that formula back into the team. So, um, the McColl conversation is an interesting one just because the receiver market, well, actually, both of these markets are very small this year. Um, Juju's like the best free agent wide receiver on the market. At this moment, if he makes it to market, which we mentioned the rumor mill, there's conversations that they're working on a long term deal with him before free agency hits, which that would be interesting. Um, That one, there's smoke. I don't know about fire. The conversation with Juan, besides Jesse Bates, who is it? Not much else. As of the guys that are available slash rumored to be gone right now, there's nobody else that's. Uh, I'm gonna that's remind you. I'm gonna remind you that before the season started last year, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, one of the arguably one of the better safeties in the league, got traded for like a pair of like a fourth and a third round. Very low, yeah, right. Very like little because the safety so, market has changed since Jamal Adams went from the Jets to the Seahawks for two. It very years. much has. Yeah. So, um, I, I I like what you're saying, but let's the remind. Second best free agent safety available if he hits the market, right? Like yeah, and much. probably more desirable for a lot of guy for a lot of teams because he's not going to be a top of the contract or top of the market yeah. guy. His but he's, his, he's, his he's value be a top be, fifteen. His contract's going to be more because he's the only other option available besides he is, the yes. guy who's probably going to reset the market at the safety position, which could also bump his comp uh, pick formula. Uh, but here's what that means: so if, if NFL teams, so the comp pick formula is a little bit of a mystery to uh, the the layman. Following the NFL, um, I'm sure NFL teams have a better idea of how all that works. Here's what that means: that means the Chiefs, if if it plays out that way, know that they're going to have some picks coming their way next season, which means they can they can un- unload some future picks. They can move some things around. They can do a lot of things. This is I, I know this is stressful, but here's what I want to say: buckle up and enjoy the show because Brett Veach isn't going to walk in to 2024 with Andrew Wiley as a starting left tackle or Joe Tooney as the starting left tackle, as much as I, I, I say that tug in cheek, um, dear Kyle's dad, please don't murder me. But like, you know, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> um, yeah, shout out, 
shout out there, but um, that that's not going to happen. And and yeah. and I go back to what has been said over and over again. They want a long term solution at left tackle. Yeah. And if you yeah. think that that Brett Veach doesn't have a board in his office with like about ten billion different you know pictures and strings and you know his conspiracy board out Ooh, there of ways something. he's going to find somebody. Always right, because remember before yeah. Orlando Brown, it was Trent Williams, and when Trent Williams went out, we went out and got Orlando Brown. And if Orlando Brown doesn't work out, we're gonna go we're get somebody, not Laramie Tunsil. Maybe, Stop maybe that now, someone. but maybe somebody. The, and and by the way, spoiler alert, because we'll we'll, call, we'll cover this more. Uh, the combine was this week. There are some good tackles in this draft, and I will will do watch and for one of them. Actually, drop. does have arms. It's okay. They did measure. Oh, they yes. measured. They remeasured, and he did in fact have arms. They just forgot to measure half of them the first time, apparently. Yeah, yeah. no, no. I, uh, I, did, I have been able to confirm that uh, every offensive tackle prospect in this arms. class actually has two arms. Yes, yeah, two of them. Because at one point, arms. the kid from Oklahoma at one point just didn't have arms, according to the combine. This yeah. Year. So, um, stay tuned for that. That's my plug for my draft stuff. We'll, we'll drop something later this week. We're gonna yeah. work on our, our graphics uh, for the King of Building. You'll see some of those, but. Um, just like I said, it's, it's free agency. This is Brett, Fe- Brett Veach's time to shine. Buckle up and enjoy the show, folks. Buckle up and enjoy the show. Exactly. And get ready to buy some new shirts. Yeah, there's going to be some new faces, I think, uh, this offseason. I think there's going to be a lot of familiar faces. I don't think this is particular just to the Chiefs, too. Like, I think this time of year and this offseason, there's going to be a lot of familiar well, faces on the move. This, this is the way of the world in the NFL anymore. But if you um, have blood pressure exactly. issues Out with the Chiefs the... fan, I would make sure you take your medicine over the next couple of weeks because it's yeah. going to be a very, very busy and interesting lead-up to our party in Kansas City in April. Um, it yeah. There's a lot to go. As Tom mentioned, we're, he's going to have a bunch of stuff for you. I just – my thing is, guys – and I'll wrap with, and I'll, I'll end on this. Um, it's not a retool. I'm sorry, it's not a rebuild. It's only a retool. We don't we don't do anything else with this anymore. And and it's it's a given at this point. We have to operate that way. So when you see yeah. these moves and these names and faces that are polarizing in a lot of times throughout this fan base, especially two of the well, help three of the four names we really discussed today, people have had drastic really reactions to in both directions over over their times here so um just enjoy them but also remember they're gonna do this a lot from now on because this is how you churn a roster with patrick mahomes as your quarterback yeah that's the thing that you kind of got to think about as a uh, as a chiefs fan nowadays you're not going to keep all the star players that you have because you have the ultimate star player. You also is, have to remember uh, what the word on. star means because it changes when 15 is your quarterback. Yeah, exactly. We're not having to uh, to re-sign Alan Bailey to a bunch of deals. We actually have some some decent guys out there. But Ooh. I'll say this. What is it with you guys and in, in personal heart attacks and me this evening? <laughs> I will say this okay. to wrap it up, this whole conversation. Outside of all the contractual things, there's a lot of great memories from all these guys that, uh, that the Chiefs had. You know, Frank... Miko, Juan, all two-time Super Bowl champs. Orlando got the one. Um, obviously, wearing the shirt, zero sacks, put it on a t-shirt from Orlando Brown. He will be a legend forever. So will Frank, Miko, Juan, whatever ends up happening. Uh, all these guys uh, definitely have a special place in Chiefs Kingdom. Cannot forget that and all the sacrifices that they've made over the past couple seasons for us. <coughs> so big shout out to those guys. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, get some of them back. But, you know, like we said, it's going to be a crazy crazy off season there's going to be a lot going on strap in chiefs kingdom we've got another episode coming out later this week we're going to talk about more of the draft stuff tom is going to really cover some options that might be more of a reality for the chiefs obviously we saw 10 draft picks last year uh might see you know a boatload more this year so be sure to follow us on all of our socials at kingdom says pod facebook twitter instagram watches on youtube at the kingdom says pod uh and you know spotify apple music wherever you get your spot of podcasts at be sure to tune in follow us and uh we will see you guys in the next one